All right, well, welcome back, everybody. My name is Andrew, and you're watching another episode of our Storm Shelter build. Now, this is probably the second most common question I get asked about the Storm Shelter as we've been doing the build series, and that is how we're going to anchor it down. Well, we're finally going to answer that today because that's exactly what we're going to do. We have a few little things to knock out first, but we're going to get into the anchors, show them off. Probably the second most common question I get asked is if my fat butt can fit through that escape hatch I did on the back side. Yes, yes I can, and uh, I think we'll try to prove that one today as well. All right, so this is the baseboard trim that's gonna go in between each wall strap and anchor. I wanna go ahead and get a coat of paint on this real quick before we get started on the anchors. So hopefully, by the time we're done with the anchors, this is dry, I can cut it. I don't want to paint it on the floor if I don't have to. All right, so the moment everybody's been, seems to be waiting for, the straps. So here's what the plans call for. These are called Simpson Strong Tie HTT5 tie down straps. As you can see, they have a tremendous amount of nail holes uh, for them. I had to buy a specific type of nail. It's going to go well into the wall. And it's got a really thick reinforced bottom plate where I'll actually bolt this down into the concrete. Now, the plans call for putting these on the outside of a shelter. Say, if you were building this in a basement, or it says you can do them on the inside. Obviously, that's the way I want to do these route the weather. I would have had to build a bigger slab, which would let water and all underneath. So it calls for 16 of these. Absolutely overkill in my mind, but might as well do what the plan called for. I've done one out and marked all along the baseboard where all 14 of these are going to go. I'll explain why I'm only doing 14, because I've got two more bolt holes going in in just a second. So what I'll do is go around, mark the hole that needs to go down into the concrete uh, on all of these, actually drill those holes. Then I'll come back, nail the straps to the wall before I bolt them to the concrete. That's crucial and that's key. That way it cinches and pulls the structure down once I tighten those bolts. All right, so the reason why I'm doing 14 tie down straps and not 16 like the plans call for is because at the bottom of the door frame, I welded on some of this 3 16th steel angle iron. Now, hindsight's 2020. I forgot to drill the holes uh, before I installed this. So I'm gonna bring a hole saw bit in and try to cut uh, two holes in each of these. And then I'm gonna anchor these down. I decided I wanna do it this way because ultimately the door is bolted to this frame. I've got the frame welded together and sandwiching and holding the wall. So it only makes sense that I should also bolt this frame down since it's such a crucial and critical piece of the structure. If something were to ever hit from the outside, I did not want this uh, door jam to shift at all. Wish me luck, 16 holes to go, and there's three quarter inch rebar everywhere in this slab. With well, the way my luck's been going, hitting nails and screws in the wall, I'm probably gonna have 16 holes that's gonna find rebar. Not looking forward to this.
That wasn't bad either. I need to quit being a negative Nancy and just get to work. Sorry if your name's Nancy. All right, so I got all my holes drilled and that really didn't take that long. That boss drill is amazing. So I'm going to vacuum up all the uh, you know concrete dust but here's something that I have figured out. I haven't done a whole lot of concrete, you know, holes and anchors. But take some compressed air and blow it down in the hole while you're vacuuming over because there's so much of that junk that falls back in there. The last thing you want to do is put your anchor down, go to tighten your bolt down, and it's still that far above the anchor because the hole's packed full of crap. Then your anchor's not really doing what it should do for uplift. Uh, it still has some sheer strength this direction, but uplift is very important on something like this. So, Blow some compressed air in the hole while you have the vacuum over it. You'll get all the junk out, and that'll allow your bolts to get all the way in there and cinch down properly and pull your anchor down. the back breaking part that I truly am dreading. All 16 of these traps have, I don't know, 20 nail holes in them. So I had a lot, a lot of nails to drive in bending over. So I'm about to take lots of breaks here. But the plans give the specific type of nails. These are over three inches long. You gotta keep in mind, technically the plywood acts as a hurricane strap. The way it's strategically nailed top and bottom and then all throughout the timbers, it's holding all the timbers together. So really a nail that just goes into the plywood would be quite strong. But these are gonna go well through the plywood all the way into the uh, timbers on the inside and that solid wall really holding this thing. I mean, I just don't see how it could ever pull up. Plus you get shear strength this way, so if something were to impact the wall, you've got all these different bolts here, um, you know, protecting you. And speaking of that, because I love numbers for some reason, I went on Simpson's uh, Strong Tie website. I decided to use, let me grab them real quick. So I decided to go with Titan anchors. Um, it, the plans didn't really specify what type of anchor, but I'm assuming they probably wanted you to put in expandable type anchors. There's quite a bit different kind for concrete. Um, they also talked about epoxy in them in. To be honest with you, that's such overkill for my situation and the strength storms that we get. I feel more than confident using these right here. And just for example, I looked them up in concrete, in three and a half inches of concrete, this is eight inches of concrete now, it showed 3,000 pounds of uh, you know, uplift strength for these right here. So 3,000 pounds times 16, what's that? 48,000 pounds plus the weight of the structure of uplift that it holds. Shear strength going this way, somewhere to impact the wall, it was something ridiculous like 7,000 pounds per bolt. So we're quite protected here. Now, if I was out in the Midwest with the EF5s throwing tractor trailers at this thing, no, I probably still wouldn't feel protected, but our little EF0s, EF1s, the rare EF1s that we get, plus the, uh, you know, the Hurricanes, they just don't get that strong. This thing's already so overbuilt. I'm kind of deviating from the plan on the anchors, but I absolutely trust these. Very, very strong. Here we go. Also got to digging around the shop, found my old S-Wing hammer. This thing is older than me. Used to be my father's. I've got a big old wafer head or waffle head one somewhere too. I got to go dig out of all that stuff that I moved over. All right, see you on a little while. It's starting to rain on me, so I may have to cut this job short today. Plus, I'm literally having to take a break after every one of these. That's a lot of bending over and nailing, so I'll go out and do something else, come back and nail another one in after a couple minutes, get a sip of water. But this rain is about to shut me down. It's supposed to rain tomorrow. There's a little cool front coming through. 
So I may have to finish the rest of this off camera, but at least you can get an idea now of what's going on. But I want to go ahead and drive one of these bolts in and show you how this is going to lock the structure down. I don't know if I've ever showed this on the channel before, but this is my old 18 volt Dewalt impact. That's another reason I want to go with Dewalt. Uh, Dewalt bought that adapter, and I can run my new 20 volt batteries in it. All right, so now you can see we have got that bolt driven five inches down into the concrete holding it in. I've got my straps going all the way around, still have a bunch more to do. All right, we can go ahead and drive these down too. Any idea on what I'm making? All right, I want y'all to see this board is the exact dimensions of the opening. Now down here, I actually have to lift it up a little to meet the opening up top. This is the same exact measured out size opening of that metal frame right there, AKA the escape hatch hole. Since a lot of y'all keep calling me fat without calling me fat and questioning if I can fit through it, let me show y'all. No, I wasn't going to crawl like that earlier because that's going to look stupid. But I can promise you, if we're ever trapped in there and I need air, I will dive through that son of a gun to get outside. Also, forgot to tell y'all, on the inside is going to be a futon. So I will actually have a step to get right up to the window and climb out. I'll just climb basically on a couch, you know, a little futon. I may eventually put something out here and lean up to this that I could get to. But I don't care if I got to come out back first or come out, put hands on the ground and flop out. Doesn't matter in that situation. I'll be happy to be alive at that point. All right, did not stop recording. You can see the opening. I can literally, you wanna see that again? All right, so imagine if I had both arms out, I'm right through, no issues whatsoever at all. So yes, an adult can fit through this. I guarantee you Tiffany and I both could, but all it takes is one person to get through to go get whatever's on the door, off the door. Go grab the tractor, chainsaw, cut off wheel, something. I can get that door open. If we're out here in the wide open middle of nowhere, chances of that door getting blocked probably have better odds of hitting the lottery, but I do have an escape hatch right here. I will keep a screwdriver inside to take the two screws out holding the AC, I can shove the AC out on the ground. I don't care if I tear it up or whatever at that point. Climb right out. We're safe, we're good. I'm gonna keep backup uh, battery source in there to run the ventilation fan. I'm keeping an O2 meter in there. We'll always have our cell phones on us. And we have two escape patches. I think I am covered for safety on this thing. All right, it keeps spitting rain on me. So like I said, I've got actually got to cut this video a lot shorter than I thought. I won't be cutting the baseboard trim today and uh, it's probably gonna take me the next couple days to put these straps in because if it rains much here coming on i'm gonna have to close the door i've already got other stuff i have to do tomorrow so i won't be able to finish the straps tomorrow if i get cut short today um so i'll work on them over the next few days probably off camera you get the general idea of what i'm doing and then next video i'll show you the completed uh, portion of it i may even go ahead and do the baseboard trim we'll see or that could wind up on the next video 
Yes, I still have a lot of touch up to do. The door still needs two coats of paint. I still gotta put one coat on the roof in here. I still need to hit the corners with the brush one more time. I've already got three coats on the wall. I'm calling that good. The heck with painting anymore. Uh, at that point, we'll try to get some electrical in here. Um, maybe some shelving. You know, we're, we're getting close on the inside. A little bit trim, finish tying everything down. And just some basic stuff. We'll move to the outside if we ever get a several day stretch of warm weather. We'll paint the outside. I've still got to do some earth augers into the ground to really hold the structure down. Not necessary. Something I'm going to go above and beyond plan to do anyways. So, the heck with that. Oh, what else we got to do? I mean, it's just some caulk here, paint. All right, so a couple more little things. We've got to install the vent fan, figure out wiring for that. Put the screens over the vent holes that's in the roof. So, just oddball little things. A little bit of trim. We may just have one video of me kind of doing final touch-up like that at a certain point. But we're getting there. We're getting there. Definitely going to have a few more videos, no doubt. It always looks like you're close, but you're not. There's always little tedious, small things to do. All right, well, thank you all so much for watching. Hopefully you enjoyed it. Sorry this episode got cut short. I was not expecting any rain today. There was supposed to be nothing oh, according to the little radar app that we have. All the rain's supposed to be tomorrow, but it showed up early. Actually, I'm feeling some drops hit me right now, so... I don't want to wind up getting water blown all in here. I done had to haul my tools off too. So again, appreciate y'all watching. We'll catch you on the next video and I'll keep y'all up to date as we keep knocking out the storm shutter.